Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. I want to show you a really cool example of what you can do inside of Power BI by combining many DAX and modeling techniques. Now, I've mocked up this really quick dashboard here where I wanted to select a time period. So let's have a look at this time period over here. So I wanted to select any time period over any time. So it's a dynamic filter and I can filter my results like so. Then what I wanted to do, then what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to select one of these days, right? I wanted to select one of these days and then I wanted to look back over an X period of days prior to that selection and review what actually happened leading up to that date. So a lot, quite a bit going on here, quite a bit going on and it's a little bit, you've got to use your imagination to actually solve this I feel. Um, because of all the different contexts that can be applied or can, that can be seen within this one report page. Because if you think about it, we've got some context here, but we've also got some context here that we can change. So what I can do is I can quickly change this around and review any days leading up to that. So we're taking a, a really small subset of something in this bottom visualization and then drilling into it up here in a, in, a, in, a, in a unique way. But then what I've also done is I've also added this what if parameter where I can filter in and out if I wanted to say look at only a few days like say the last three days or I can take it all up to um, I've got I've done it up to 20 here but you could do it to whatever you like. So how did I solve it? But there's a little bit to it but really cool like I, th I think if you if you can understand how this actually works then um, your your mind will ex will expand in terms of what's possible. Now the hardest thing to solve here, the hardest thing to solve is how do I within a context right? So within here, then select something from here, and then show all of these days all at once, and not have an additional filter being applied. Because if you go and select something, you got to think if you go and select a date right. Generally, that's going to filter everything on your report page. So if I selected this date, then you should only see one result here. But you see, it's not actually impacting any of these particular uh, visualizations, this select, this specific selection here. Now, how did I do that? It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. The first thing you have to think about is that you can't actually, We, you may be able to, but I don't think you should. You don't want to, you do not want to use the date column, what I've got selected here, you do not want to use this in the slicer, okay? What you actually want to do is create another table, another table that has just the date column in it. So let's go have a look, let's go have a look. So this is what a generic date table looks like. This is one that um, I use all the time in all of my demos. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to create another table because I didn't want the uh, selection to impact directly the visualizations. I wanted to just extract the date selection out of it to then put it into formula, right? And so what I did is I created a brand new table like this with just the date. And I'm actually using this in the slicer. There's actually another interesting point to this. What you don't want to do here is you do not want to create this column or this table by using the new table function, or by writing a, a table function, uh, like values or distinct. You do not want to do that. What you want to do is you actually want to jump into the query editor, and I'll show you here. What I've done is I have, um, what I've d I have referenced, I have referenced the dates table and then removed every other column. So what this does is it actually hard codes the table instead of being derived from a formula. And the reason why you want to do this is of, of, of what is called circular dependencies. And um, if you actually try it, if you actually try it, you'll see exactly what I mean. You can't actually build a relationship between this date table or a one-to-many relationship, between, which is what we want, between this date, date table where the relationship is going to flow from this column down to this new one that we created. So we want, we want to actually be able to filter this so that the slicer will still filter. So this is how the model needs to be set up. So what I've done is I created that additional table and I've called it selection date, but I do want to make sure that I have a relationship between this table and this table. Now, why do I want that? Because what I want to do is that if I go and change this selection here, I actually want this slicer to expand or contract based on the selection that I'm making in this slicer here. 
because if you didn't have this relationship what would happen is that this would just show every single day throughout time and you would uh, or you would find quite a lot of the time that this would end up being blank because you would have some selection which is outside of the, the context coming from this slicer. Okay, so that's how you need to set this up. And now, now why I wanted to go into that was in a little bit more detail is because there's actually m many ways that you can apply this, not just on time. You could, play, you could pl apply this to any lookup table. And once you do understand the technique of how you can make... Um, the where you can utilize content diff, layer context on top of each other to create different visualization your your world will truly expand um, from from an analytical perspective or, or especially a visualization perspective now then we have to work out a formula then we have to work out a formula of uh, this calculation here so what I'm going to do I'm going to turn it into a table because I always recommend doing that and I'm going to bring in total sales so we can see what's actually happening so you see here You'll see here that we've got two calculations. We've got one is total sales, so that's just showing every single sale per day. But then we've got sales from selected date. And so what I'm doing is I'm saying I want to select the 26th of I'm, I'm selecting the 26th of August 2016 here, right? So 26th of August 2016, and then I want to look back three days. So so 26th, 25th, 24th. So I only want to show those three in this case because I've got three in a visualization. Obviously, I can expand this. And that's going to change the amount of calculations done. Let's have a look at the formula. So then what I wanted, what I needed to do was I needed to work out, okay, well, what is the selected day, no matter what context um, we we are in? Okay, so I want to just I want to hard code this day in a variable. And the reason why I've got to wrap it in all dates is because remember that uh, this is this is the this is the date column coming from the date table, right? And for every single day here, what's happening is that this is placing a filter on this one. So, But what we want to do is we want to just extract the date here, which is selected. And so all I needed to do was wrap, um, wrap that actual result, this particular result here, inside of an uh, calculate with all dates so that the context is removed um, on every single day here. So this is hard-coded. And then I just want to run it through some simple logic where I say, well, if the current date and that's what max date is doing is greater than the selected date minus the day number which is this dynamic parameter that we have input if it's greater than that and if it's less than and if the current date is less than or equal to uh, this selected date as well then equal total sales if not equal blank and that's how this particular result was, is calculated and then so if we then bring this into a visualization that's how all of this is basically uh, um, calculated so what we can do is that we've got this dynamic parameter, which is flowing into the formula by this particular measure here. But then we also have the dynamic selection that we can make. So we can actually select any particular day here and that this particular selection is always going to be this, this one here, the very, very last date. And you'll see here that I've said show results before or after a selected date. Well, this could be applied for after two. So say, for instance, you are analyzing something you want to look at, um, you want to look at all your results here down here. This is, this is the real world, real world application. This. You want to look at all your results down here. And say, for instance, you see this massive spike. And it could have been, you know, because of a sale period or something. You had some, you had a marketing event, you, you, you had a, um, and, and you wanted to see, well, okay, what was the flow on effect for an X number of days post that particular event? Well, what you could do is you could, um, you could view and uh, view the entire uh, results, all the results on a, a particular context in one chart, and then say, okay, well, let's have a look at this date, 20th of April 2016. So we could then go find 20th of April 2016, select that, and then with a change of formula, you could then see forward dates instead of backward dates. And so that's how this can be applied in many, many different ways. I think this is a seriously cool technique. I've, I've been playing around with it for a little while, and and it's just the, the 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 idea around duplicating columns in here and uh, applying different contexts or or applying uh, contexts in slightly different ways uh, on your report pages and 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 then extracting the values that you're selecting. There's there's a there's 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 a bit to that, but there's a lot of power to that as well. So if you can understand how to bring these things all together, you know the model and incorporating those into your DAX formulas or the 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 selections into your DAX formulas, then you, know, you can create some pretty cool visualizations.
Okay, I want to round things off there. All the best. Hopefully you like this technique. Hopefully you can see some application for it. I think there's a lot out there. I honestly do. Um, so, so wish you all the best. If you like the content, uh, definitely throw the video a like. I really, really appreciate it. And, and also don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise TNA TV. So much content about Power BI coming out. Uh, so really want to get that into your hands as soon as it's um, soon as it's out there. Okay, all the best. Cheers.